Yo guys, how you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. And today, let's talk about Metroid and those game awards. So just a quick heads up before I actually get into the topic for today. This will be the last video you guys see for me for almost a week, I would say. My girlfriend and I are going out of town tomorrow. We're going to be going back home to Denver for a couple of days, for a long weekend, for holiday, friends and family stuff, and the whole kind of nine. So I'm going to be on vacation. I am not going to be able to make any videos, barring like, I don't know, some crazy major megaton announcement drop that is something I just had to make a video on, in which case I could probably just film something on my phone and upload it kind of that way to YouTube, which I don't normally do. But anyway, long story short, this is the last video for about a week or so. So don't worry, I'm not dying. I'm not disappearing or going away. I'm just going to be busy doing the uh, vacation thing, taking a break from work, and also that means I won't be able to make any YouTube videos. So now you guys know, and now let's get into the goods about Metroid. So as the title suggests, I have a pretty big topic and a pretty big question that's been on my mind and something that I realized would obviously be perfect for a video, for a topic for me to discuss, ramble on for a couple of minutes about, and also pose this question to you guys. And I don't know, maybe some people don't find it to be a big deal. I personally do see this as a huge question, and it's whether or not Nintendo made a mistake or missed a really huge opportunity by not having any Metroid at the Game Awards. Of course, as we all know, last week, the Game Awards for 2018 did air, and through that, there was a lot of conversation, a lot of hype. There were even some rumors and plenty of behind the scenes talk about Metroid, Metroid Prime 4, or the Metroid Prime Trilogy, or even all of the above showing up at the Game Awards. And of course, I even discussed that going back several months, going back to Reggie and his t-shirt with that whole photo with Jeff Keighley and the whole thing. And it just seemed like there was a lot of motion on the idea and a lot of traction that gave us reason to believe it. For myself, yeah, the some of the some of the rumors and stuff definitely went to me thinking that there was a good shot it would be there. But for me, it was also the fact that it just made sense for them to show it at the Game Awards, and it makes sense for the Metroid Prime trilogy to be coming to the Switch. It's it's just something that business-wise I saw as almost an obvious thing for them to do. And of course, as we also know, the Game Awards came and went. I enjoyed the show, even though I know a lot of people didn't. But regardless of that, Metroid was nowhere to be seen. And of course, this was disappointing to so many of us. And even though I didn't need Metroid to be there to enjoy the show, and I'm even still okay with the fact that we've yet to see Metroid, at the end of the day, I think for a lot of people, it made a pretty big impact. And they are more than upset over the fact that there was no Metroid. And even I am certainly disappointed simply because I expected it and I just wanted it, damn it. I mean, I've been waiting to actually see Metroid Prime 4 for so long and I would just be over the moon if the uh, Metroid Prime Trilogy uh, port or remaster or whatever did actually exist. So even though I was fine without it, I certainly was disappointed. And so now when we look at whether or not Nintendo maybe missed an opportunity, I think that's the important question here. And I'm going to I'm gonna probably surprise a lot of you guys when I say this, but overall, when all the chips are counted and we look at the whole situation with uh, through the lens of hindsight, honestly, I don't necessarily think Nintendo missed the biggest opportunity. Now, of course, there's a lot that comes with that answer, though, including a lot of evidence to show how maybe there could have been a situation where they made a mistake not showing it. You know me, I like to pick topics and discuss topics where even if I fall on one side or another, I think exploring both sides is always valuable. And I do think that there is maybe a case to be made for why somebody could think, yeah, they did make a mistake or they did miss an opportunity to not show Metroid Prime 4. And I think that the biggest case, and I even discussed this before the show, was that you get to get one of your big titles, one of your big famous first party franchises in front of so many more people and so many more eyes and viewers and gamers than if you just did it, for example, in a Nintendo Direct. And I think a lot of people expect it to possibly show up in, an, an, in a Nintendo Direct, and I have some opinions on that that I won't go into today, but when you just look at the idea of the Game Awards, the benefit is people who aren't Nintendo fans or who wouldn't tune into Nintendo Directs or Nintendo at E3 are, we're also watching the Game Awards. And I mean, I, I don't know if there's any official numbers, but I've seen numbers thrown out there about upwards of like 25, 26 million or so people apparently watched and streamed the Game Awards. And I'm going to tell you right now with certainty, that's way more people than ever watch a Nintendo Direct. And so, yeah, maybe it was a little bit of a mistake or a misfire in a sense to show off that game. I mean, you've got the people who are Metroid fans, people who are Nintendo and Switch fans, or people who want to Switch but are still on the fence 
who would have gotten something great out of finally seeing Metroid Prime 4 showcased. Nintendo could have said, this is this great game that we're making. People have wanted this for a decade. We're finally working on it. Here's what it looks like. We're really proud of it. It's graphically very impressive. It looks like a lot of fun. It's this great sci-fi action shooter thing. Like, it just would have been a great thing to show people who are waiting for it. And then it also could appeal to people who might be a little bit on the fence about Nintendo and, th and still have some misconceptions about how kiddie they are or the fact that their games aren't good or maybe they can't produce good graphics or the Switch isn't actually a good console and worthy of playing games on. I think Metroid Prime 4 could be that perfect game to kind of bring everyone together, so to speak. The Metroid and the Nintendo fans and the people who are not Nintendo or Switch fans. And all of a sudden everyone can, can see this great looking game and be like, wow, that's amazing. And yeah, the Game Awards obviously could have been a great place to show that. But... Honestly, I still overall think that at the end of the day, even though it would have been great for all of these reasons to show us Metroid Prime 4 or even the trilogy at the Game Awards, I think at the end of the day, it's really not that big of a deal. And there is something to be said for Nintendo still keeping the hype and the mystery going. I mean, the fact that we're all still waiting and we, and so many people, while yes, are disappointed over the fact that we didn't see Metroid Prime 4 at the Game Awards, at the same time, now still have something to wonder about and to be excited for and to hope to see whenever Nintendo finally shows us that game. And it's kind of Nintendo playing the boil and simmer game here, where it's getting everyone excited about the prospect of seeing the game, that's the boiling part where the hype builds, the tension builds, the excitement builds, we're all expecting it, expecting it, expecting it, and then when it doesn't show up, we simmer. We simmer back down, we calm back down, we come back down to reality. Okay, we still haven't seen the game, we're gonna have to continue to wait, and so our, our anticipation levels kind of reset. And so now Nintendo can continue to work that to their advantage, and to Metroid Prime 4's advantage, and start to let that build up again. And more rumors will start to happen, and another Nintendo Direct might be announced, and everyone will start to get more and more excited. Okay, now we're gonna see Metroid Prime 4, and the longer they delay it, even though it's super frustrating on our end, absolutely, the longer they delay it, Nintendo kind of gets to keep that anticipation and that hype going. And that truly, at the end of the day, you guys, even though it sucks for us, from Nintendo standpoint and from a business standpoint, it's kind of smart because it keeps people invested. The more they keep people wanting Metroid Prime 4, the better it's going to feel when we finally see it. And the more chance there is of people being so excited, they're going to run out and buy the game and support the Metroid franchise and probably buy even a Nintendo Switch just to play this game. That's kind of, I think, the business approach they're playing here. Nintendo and Reggie and even Jeff freaking Keeley, who I love the guy, but come on, these guys all know knew that everyone was waiting for Metroid at the Game Awards. Jeff even said something right at the beginning, and I'm actually so pissed about this, because he said something at the beginning where he's like, oh, we got a great show, we're gonna show all these things, great awards, great royal premieres, couple of rumors people have talked about online are gonna be showing up tonight. Like, that's not verbatim, that's like a paraphrasing, but go back and watch the first like five minutes of the actual Game Awards, not the pre-show, but the Game Awards, and he freaking said something just like that, basically trying to give us a wink and a nod that Metroid Prime 4 was going to be there. I guess he could have been talking about like Mortal Kombat 11, for example, because that's a non-Nintendo game that was rumored and did show up, and yeah, that's great, I'm pumped for that game, but come on, man, that wasn't what the big online conversation was, it was about frickin' Metroid, and Jeff knew it, he was teasing us with Reggie videos, and he certainly wasn't talking about Joker, you know, the Persona character showing up in Smash, even though I know that that was a big reveal for Persona fans, I personally I don't really care either way, I know it was a big reveal, so I don't want to take anything away from that, but let's Let's be real, man. They were toying with our emotions. Nintendo and Reggie knew, and they made a conscious decision to let the hype build to show that stupid Metroid Screw Attack t-shirt in that one video, and they knew what was going to happen, and so everyone expected Metroid, and Nintendo played us, you guys. They totally played us, I think, personally. They played us on purpose, by design. And so now we continue to wait and we continue to be hyped. And so that's why, bringing it back to one of the main points here, that's why my personal opinion is, even with my disappointment, I still don't think that Nintendo made a big misfire because I also am glad that I still have the game to look forward to. You know, I, mean, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but even though I'm dying to see the game, it's like, man, the excitement and the mystery is still in front of me because we didn't see it at the Game Awards. And I think that I can be okay with that, even though I, I feel like we probably should have seen the game by now, I'm ultimately okay still continuing to wait. And honestly, 
when Nintendo does show this game, even though, you know, the amount of viewers at a Nintendo Direct isn't quite as high as it is for the Game Awards, I still think that overall, this game is going to probably do a fine job selling itself. I think Nintendo is going to be very smart with the marketing, smart with how they reveal it, smart with when they reveal it. And I think the game is going to look so incredible that people are going to be hyped and it's going to make the news cycles as an impressive title, no matter when it's shown and no matter how it's shown and whether it's shown in a Nintendo Direct or at E3 next year, which is kind of more what I'm thinking now. At this point, it's probably going to be E3. But even if it is a Nintendo Direct, I think that it's it's going to do a good enough job selling itself. And Nintendo's marketing is so freaking awesome right now in the Switch era, you guys. I just think that they're going to kill it showing people this game. And they're going to kill it making us want to buy this game. Making people want to be excited for this game. So that's why, even though it would have been great and smart for them to show it at the Game Awards, at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to hurt the game. And I think at the end of the day, we're all going to be fine. We're going to live through this grueling wait. And eventually, sometime in the next several months, I'm sure sure we're going to see this game and by the time it happens you guys we're going to feel so great about it and be so happy no one's going to give a damn that you know four months ago when we thought it was going to be at the game awards they didn't show it to us it's going to be old news by the time we see it and i know it's going to look so good we're going to care even less that we had to wait another couple of months i think it's going to be fine and I think it's fine that it wasn't at the Game Awards. So that's kind of the uh, overall essence of my thoughts here and on this kind of topic and this question. Obviously, I am dying to know what you guys think. Do you think it was a mistake for them to not show it at the Game Awards? Do you think it was an absolute necessity for it to be there? Or do you think, kind of like I do, that that overall, even though it would have been nice, I think that, you know, that maybe you think Metroid Prime 4 and Nintendo are going to be just fine, and once we see it, it's going to be great, and that's what's going to matter the most. Whatever you think, share that stuff below, and that is it for me today and for this week. So thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob Overlook to Review, and I'll catch you guys next week on another video.